get rid of the rest of him. Yes, I know it's hard, but guess what? You are not a human garbage can, so you don't need to eat everything that's on your plate, right? You're not a human garbage can. So can you just eat half the fries or a few of the fries, right? Usually it's just the taste of something that you really need. You don't really need to gorge. Alright everybody, welcome to another episode of The Best You've Ever Been. Hope you're doing great. It is already March. Can you imagine? This year is, hey, going by. These years just go by. I hope you're doing great out there and I hope you have been working on those goals you've set for yourself at the beginning of the year. Remember we started talking about your future self, that person you're becoming, What is that future vision that you have of yourself, right? That is what you want to be working on right now. We've also talked about how to go about the process of prioritizing the needs of your future self over the needs of your current self, which is one of the biggest problems that most people have, right? Because, you know, we get so caught up and busy in our day-to-day lives that we're caught up in taking care of our immediate needs, usually the urgencies, right? The daily urgencies, the daily things that we need to catch up on, all the projects that we are overcommitted on, right? So we get caught up taking care of those things, and we tend to neglect taking care of the needs of our future self, which is how we're going to go about the process of creating or bringing into reality that future vision of yourself that you said is important, which is not going to happen unless you put some focus on it, right? So today what I want to talk about is how to eat 1% better every day, right? How to eat 1% better every day. You know, one of the things I, I, I've i been working with some new clients and one of the first things they always say to me is, okay, well, so what's the diet? What am I gonna do? Well, you know, it's like, what, what's, what's the meal plan here? I'm like, well, slow down. I don't do diets. I don't do meal plans. Because both of those things are setting yourself up to fail. And I don't want you to set yourself up to fail. I want you to set yourself up to win. Right? I want you to set yourself up to have small wins. Because small wins build momentum, people. And momentum helps you to build consistency. And when you build consistency, then you build belief. Hey, you know, I can do this. And when you build belief, that is when you start to get bigger wins, right? Because now you know, hey, I can do this. So remember, we go for those small wins. And those small wins help us to make progress. So the idea is to work on one small habit at a time. And and the reason being, folks, you know, your brain is in charge of all this. and, And that's what you haven't been taught. You haven't been taught that your brain is in charge of all this. You know, 95% of the things we do on a daily basis, we're not even aware of what we're doing. You know, 95% of our habits are subconscious. We're not aware. Only the 5% that we're able to think about, and those are the things that we have control over. But all the other stuff that we do, we just do automatically, right? The brain just takes over and Do them automatically. So in order to make changes to those 95% of the things that we're not aware, first we have to bring it to awareness. And you can't bring everything to awareness because then, well, you won't be able to function, right? So we start one thing at a time. You can only change one habit at a time. If you do anything more than that, then your brain is just going to rebel on you. You know, you give up everything you love to eat and your brain is going to rebel on you. Why? Because your brain is a pleasure junkie. Your brain loves pleasure. It loves all that junk food you're eating. It loves all the wine and alcohol you're drinking, right? Remember, the same pleasure centers that get activated in your brain with food are the same pleasure centers that are activated with drugs, sex, and alcohol. So remember, your brain 
gets addicted fast when you activate those pleasure centers. So in order to make changes, permanent changes, you have to take this slow. You have to go one step at a time. You have to make, strive to be 1% better, right? That's one change. You make one change, it's 1% better. So that's what I work with my clients to do. It's like my new clients, well, we'll start with one habit at a time. Which one habit can we work on? And I usually start with what I call keystone habits. You know, those habits that if you make a change to one habit, they usually end up affecting a lot of different areas in your life. So it makes a lot of things better. So it makes it seem like what you're doing a lot of things when you're really only changing one. So what is that keystone habit? What is that what is that one habit that if you were to make a small change to the one habit, it will have a big impact on the rest of your day, on the rest of your life, on the results that you get. Right? So that is how we go about the process. So today let's talk about how to eat 1% better because you're eating, obviously, is one of those keystone habits. Right? Your nutrition is one of those keystone habits. You change up your eating and you affect, well, you affect your health, you affect your weight, you affect your energy level, you affect how you show up, you affect a lot of different areas in your life just by changing up your eating. So let's talk about how to make small changes to eating. What does it mean to eat 1% better every day? Well, it means to focus on one thing. One small thing. It's like, for instance, I was talking with a, a client yesterday, and for her, alcohol is a big thing, right? And, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, moms, well, you know, you've got young kids, and it's frustrating, and you feel like the end of the day, you, well, you got to wind down. So you have a couple glasses of wine, and that usually leads to something else, maybe some chocolate and some other stuff. You know, some people just go for the hardcore stuff, right? And forget this wine stuff. I want the hardcore liquor stuff. So, so you, you know, you, you have a shot, and that turns into two, and, and maybe it's just a glass of whiskey or something, and but here's the deal, you're doing that every night or three, four times a week and all those extra calories add up, right? All those extra calories add up. So when you're able to make small changes, you don't have to give it all up, just like I told my client. Well, no, you can't give it all up because if you've been doing it for a while, it's already programmed in your brain. In order to rewire your brain and change the brain code to a habit like that, you have to make small changes. So you make small change. How can you make a small change? Well, well, here's one thing. If you're doing hard liquor, well, you know, why? Why are you doing it? See, that's the first place to start. Why? What does it give you? It gives you something, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. So let's focus on that. Why? You're not eating because you're hungry, right? So that's my conscious eating method. Well, well, are you physically hungry? Well, no, you're usually not eating because you're hungry. So you're doing it for another reason. So why? Why are you doing it? So think about that. What are you getting from it? Well, it makes you feel calm and it soothes you. And, and so you're eating for your drinking to get calm and to soothe yourself. So the next question is, well, what else can you do to get the same results? Can you change the behavior to get the same results? Can you get the same result? Because when you deal with changing habits, right, You've got to give the brain the reward. The, the brain is looking for reward. It gives you that, it pushes you towards the behavior that you have, you have developed over time and it keeps pushing you in triggered. Like, you know, you get frustrated with the kids and, you know, you want to have something after you put them to bed. So you have to give the brain the same reward. So the reward is it soothes you. You feel different. It's, you're changing how you feel. But is there another way of getting there? Right? Can you, to soothe yourself, right? You can't just give up the drinking because your brain is going to be looking for it. So no matter how hard you try, you just go cold turkey and give it up. Well, your brain is going to ramp up those cravings and push you back towards it. So can you do something else? Instead of having, let's say, a, a, you know, one drink, if it's hard liquor, instead of having one drink, what else do you like? Well, my client, well, she likes tea. So I'm like, okay, well, can you have a cup of tea 
and just pour like a half a shot in your tea. And her face lit up. No, oh, yeah, I can do that. Well, you see, that's 1% better. Because you think that one drink, you've got three to 500 calories in that. If you were to break that down and do just a fraction of that. Okay, well, now we're dealing with about maybe 50 calories. So you see the difference that you're making there? That's 1% better. You're being better without giving up. Everything that you love to do without giving up everything you love to eat. Well, that's just one example of how to eat 1% better, right? Instead of giving up all your French fries, well, can you just eat half the fries? Then just share it with somebody, toss somebody or, or something. Get some fries, get a small salad. Well, eat half your fries and then have a small salad. Get rid of the rest of them. Yes, I know it's hard, but guess what? You are not a human garbage can, so you don't need to eat everything that's on your plate, right? You're not a human garbage can. So can you just eat half the fries or a few of the fries, right? Usually it's just the taste of something that you really need. You don't really need to gorge. So can you just have a few of the fries and toss them and have a small salad for the rest, right? That's 1% better. You're not depriving yourself. You're not, you know, going on a diet. That doesn't work. And you see, the brain gets the same reward. It gets the taste of it. And over time, as you slowly cut back, you are training your brain to recognize that salad as just as enjoyable, right? That is what you're now programming. So over time, if you eat less of the fries and more of the salad, the salad will eventually take over for the fries, right? So that's how you're programming your brain to transition from the fries to the salad. If you were to just give up your fries, give up your burgers, give up everything you love to eat and just eat a salad, oh God, how boring. And it's not going to last because your brain is not getting the same reward. You get, you're getting something from eating those fries, right? Or you wouldn't be eating them. You're getting something from eating the way you're eating or you wouldn't be eating it. You're getting something from your Starbucks every day or you wouldn't be doing it. It's giving you something. So the question is, what is it giving you? What are you getting from it? And is there another way of going about doing it so that you can slowly start cutting back on this one behavior and transition to a different behavior? Cut back on one thing that you're eating and start transition into eating something else. Like the alcohol, well, little tea laced with a little bit of the alcohol, right? Instead of two glasses of wine, well, let's have a glass of wine and then let's go for maybe a cup of tea or a glass of sparkling water with, with lemon, maybe a little juice in there and give it a little flavor, right? So you make small changes. Instead of giving up all your fries, okay, well, maybe just eat half the fries, get rid of it, then have a small salad. Eventually, well, just a few fries and a small salad. Eventually, all you need is maybe just a taste of the fries. Right? You don't need all of it, but it's okay. A taste of it is better. I, I said a little bit of hell makes heaven taste more better, right? So you don't have to give up everything you love to eat. A little bit of hell makes heaven taste more better. And that's a problem people have when they start trying to eat healthy. They think they have to give up everything that they love to eat. Well, no, you don't have to give up everything you love to eat. But just a taste of it sometimes. You know, sometimes just a taste of bacon on your sandwich or in your salad. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Some bacon bits. Hey, it gives you the taste of eating it instead of gorging on a lot of it. Just a taste of it. Maybe one little small piece gives you the, the flavor of it. And that's all you really need. That's what I'm talking about being 1% better. Eating 1% better every day, just making small changes to what you're doing. So think about it, folks. Think about what you're doing right now and how can you make one small change? I don't want you to change everything. I want you to make one small change to what you're doing, to one thing. Like breakfast. Well, what can you change at breakfast? You know, what, what do you have for breakfast? Well, if you're having a bagel and cream cheese, okay, well, could you cut back to half a bagel and cream cheese? instead, right? 
and just make that one change. Maybe put a little small fruit salad there. You know, one day, can you, can you, instead of the bagel and cream cheese, could you go to maybe whole wheat toast, right? The fruit salad. Can you have, no, uh, you know, have a hard boiled egg to the mix? Just think about one thing you can change. You don't want to give up everything all at once. Just make small changes, right? So think about two to three different things you can do for breakfast. Just make one meal, one meal, one small change. That's 1% better, right? You can't change up breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything you're eating throughout the day. That's a diet. And diets fail over the long term because you can't maintain that kind of change. You're trying to make a two dozen changes all at once and your brain won't allow you to do that. In order to rewire your brain, you have to focus on one thing so that you can change the brain code to that one habit. In order to change the brain code to that one habit, you have to be able to transition what you're doing to something else slowly so that your brain will pick up on that. Oh, okay. Well, this is fine. I'm still getting what I want. I'm still eating some fries. I'm eating a salad. Okay, so I see the salad is in the mix now. Okay, well, maintain that habit. Keep the salad in the mix. Keep a few fries. You keep that over the long term. That becomes the new habit that you're training your brain to pick up on. Pretty soon, that is the brain code that's in there. That is what's in your subconscious, right? Your habits are maintainable when they become subconscious habits. Until they become subconscious habits, they're not maintainable. Because when they become subconscious habits, that's when they are automatic. And how do habits become automatic? Consistency over time. You do something enough time, the same way, repeatedly, eventually it will become a habit. No matter what it is. Right? You pick your nose enough times every day, eventually it becomes a nose-picking habit. <laughs> it becomes a subconscious nose-picking habit that you're not even aware of. So the process of creating and breaking habits, well, it can be easy to create habits and it could be very difficult to break old habits because most of our habits we're not aware of. Most of our habits, 95% of our habits are subconscious habits and to break them we need to bring them to consciousness we need to become aware of them before we can break them all right my friends that's all i've got for you today hope you're doing well out there i hope this has been helpful how to eat one percent better every day give it a shot focus on it start doing it today and see how it works for you. I'm Dr. Del Millers. And like I said, check out the show notes for all the resources I've got for you. I hope you join me. Remember, I've got this new training called Rewire Your Brain. And these are the kind of things I talk about in the Rewire Your Brain training. Because I realize that a lot of us haven't been trained on recognizing that our brain is in charge of our habits. You know, it's not your diet and exercise that gives you the results. Your brain is in charge of our habits. Habits are created in the brain, and we can only change them in the brain by changing the brain code. Okay? Until next time, may the best of your todays be the worst of your tomorrows. You take care. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>